Hey guys, so before the video starts, I want to apologize for the microphone quality currently and throughout the video. I am in the process of moving in with my girlfriend, and I left my Blue Yeti and other microphone at my house, so I will have better quality in future uploads, but I wanted to get this out so that I don't have a huge break between uploads. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so one of my most popular things that I've been playing lately while taking my short break from YouTube. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? Has been to play Seven Days to Die. And since my most popular video is an FPS boosting guide, I thought, what better way to return to YouTube than to make an FPS boosting guide for a game I know and love that is optimized? There's a lot of health benefits to pickles as well. Arguably a lot worse than Fallout 76 was. Alright guys, so I put a ton of effort into this FPS boosting pack. I hope you guys enjoy. The first thing you'll want to do is head to the link in the description and download this zip file here and open it up using 7-zip or WinRAR. Take the folder, extract it to your desktop. Once you have the folder, go ahead and open that up. And we're just going to go down the list and get done with everything. The first thing you're going to want to do is start with the Windows Timer Resolution Tweak. That's going to open a quick pop-up and disappear, and you'll know that that's been complete. The next thing we can do is set up the Windows Registry Tweaks. Again, you're going to run that. It's going to give you a dialog box about doing some component changes to the registry. Go ahead and click Yes, and it'll register the key and value edits for performance. The next thing we're going to do is update and install all versions of Visual C. I made a handy batch file for taking care of this, and everything you need is located in this folder. So just run the batch file. Special thanks to Wizard at Tech Power Up. He helped me make this because he had the original version. I just changed it up to verify and add newer versions. So you'll see to press any key to continue, go ahead and do so. And it'll start installing. I'm going to go ahead and let this run through, and I'll be right back. Okay, once it's completed successfully, press any key and it'll close the box. And the next thing we're going to do is remove all the bloatware from Windows running this PS1 script. Remember, to run a PowerShell script, you'll have to right click and click Run with PowerShell. Once complete, we'll go ahead and use the batch file to create a performance power plan. This will also set the power plan, and special thanks to r slash bitwig user spud1080 for the original creation and idea of this. Once it creates the power plan, it'll verify and set it. And once complete, you can press any key. The last thing we're going to do with Windows is update and install the DirectX drivers. Go ahead and run them. Click Accept. Next. Make sure to uncheck installing the Bing bar, unless you're into that stuff. And once complete, hit Finish. The next thing we're going to do is navigate to our files for 7 Days to Die. The easiest way to do that is to right click Steam and go to your library. Right click 7 Days to Die and go to Properties. Click Installed Files and click Browse. Once here, we're going to be looking for the 7 Days to Die underscore data folder. And you're going to take the boot.cfg and drag it in. If you already have one, which you should, click Replace. Go ahead and close everything out and launch the game. Once we're in the game, click Options and go to Video. Set your resolution to Native and Full Screen on. Leave Dynamic Resolution Mode off. Set VSync off. And set the FOV to whatever you like. I prefer 70 as anything over this causes a lot of freezing for me. Under Quality, we're going to make a custom preset using Medium Anti-Aliasing to get decent quality without too many jagged edges. For our graphical settings, since we are on a rather high-end system, we're going to max these out. However, since the game is poorly optimized for CPU usage, we are going to pay special attention to set our shadow distance, view distance, and grass distance to low. The rest shouldn't affect your PC very much if you have a competent graphics card. However, all of these settings under this visual list should be off. 
The final thing we're going to do is disable dynamic mesh, setting the distance to 100, quality to no, and land claim only to yes. We can set all these values below to 1 and click apply, and that is the final step. Alright guys, so I hope this video helped you in some way. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know how many frames this guide increased you by. And until the next video, peace.